Hello and welcome to this new video. I'm Dennis from the Flip Fluids add-on development team and today I will be talking about the Flip Fluids development in the past year and what we actually are working on. But first of all let me say thank you. Thank you for more than 4,000 sales. With this we will be able to develop the Flip Fluids add-on in full time and actually it's looking like we can continue working on it and full time what is really great thank you very much okay but what is happening so don't talk too much let's have a look inside the first thing on my list is meshing volume meshing volume can be found in the uh, physics tab on the right side and then when you scroll down to the fluid uh, flip fluid surface panel you will see meshing volume and you can choose between the main volume <clears throat> and object volume. So what is the difference? Let me show you. I have uh, made some simulations here. So um, we have a cylinder as obstacle that is moving through the domain. We have the domain itself. We have some fluid inside the domain and we have a sphere. So this sphere is uh, doing nothing here at this scene, but it will have an effect in other scenes. All right, so um, what I did here is I use this as this volume, as domain volume. And uh, when I play the, the animation, you will see nothing special here. So the cylinder is moving here. It's generating waves, some white water. It's driving through the sphere here. And um, yes, meshing domain volume is doing what it says. It's using the domain, the complete domain to mesh the fluid simulation. Okay, so the next uh, scene is um, meshing object view volume. So this is the same scene and we have uh, all the same elements here, but the difference is here that I have chosen the sphere to be used as meshing volume. So as you can see here on the right side, uh, let me make this bigger. As you can see on the right side here, I've uh, selected object volume and then uh, I've chosen the sphere to uh, become part of the simulation. And uh, how it's looking like it this here. So, okay, you see that uh, the fluid has been meshed inside the sphere. And you maybe have a question, where's the difference between the meshing object uh, volume and using a sphere as inverted obstacle? So I have a third scene here for you uh, where I used the um, sphere as inverted obstacle. So as you can see here, I have select um, the domain and it is used as volume completely. Nothing special here. But when I select the sphere, I made it an obstacle and I checked this inverse checkbox here. And let's take a look. So when, when um, comparing these two simulations, you will find out what the difference is. Yes, an obstacle that is inversed will use, um, will cut the fluid. Let's say it will cut the fluid and will only simulate it inside the sphere and use it as obstacle also. So you can see when the cylinder is driving through, the waves will splash on the walls of the sphere. And that does not happen here in the, the left side. And the difference is um, when you use an object as a volume for meshing, the simulator will simulate the whole domain and everything there. And uh, it will only mesh the part what is inside the sphere, while on the right side, the inverse obstacle will cut everything outside and only simulate what's inside the sphere. Okay, so you will not have that collisions here from the sphere because invisibly the fluid is going on here on the right and on the left side. And of course it means there's a difference in simulation times as I can see, as you can see here when uh, going down here the simulation states you will see uh, this simulation took about one hour to simulate and this simulation took about... what the hell? <laughs> I'm sorry, the so right side this took about 11 minutes, so that is a huge difference. That's uh, the difference between meshing object volumes or meshing the complete domain or using inverse obstacles. The next thing on my list is remove mesh near boundary. 
So what is this made for? Uh, let me show you uh, this scene here. Maybe you have seen it on YouTube. I've uploaded it uh, a while ago. And it's this simulation here where we have this Tauros. Um, yes, it was a good compositing try and um, I've learned a lot by doing this simulation. And uh, one problem is when doing something like this is how to get a smooth transition from the simulation to the real footage. And um, it's not perfect as you will find out that uh, some foam is fading out here and the waves are fading out here. And um, yes, it's not perfect. I have to learn a lot more. But um, the thing is, let's think about, we would not use uh, this new remove mesh near boundary feature. That would mean to have a simulation that is looking like this. Oh, let me switch your preview mode like this, where we have a, a thick fluid surface, as you can see here. So this is thick, what means when we render it, it will be hard, as you can see here, it will be hard to have a smooth transition from, uh, from these edges to the footage. Uh, the best way is to have a flat surface here. So this will be uh, much more easier to uh, composite it on real footage. And the way to do this is um, while the domain is selected, you will find it on uh, the surface panel on the right side. And there is that um, meshing against boundary and you can enable that checkbox for remove mesh near boundary and type in distance. A distance of one uh, works well in the most scenes in my tries. And when this has been done, you have to re-simulate your scene and um, then you will have the result um, with a flat surface. So I have um, the already simulated scene in a, a baking folder. So get this here, reload frame, and the final one, and you will see it's flat. Yeah, it's really flat. And this way it will be easy or more easy to composite it to real footage to have this look here. What would not uh, look that good if you would have a thick surface here where we need to hide the thickness in any way. White water improvements were on our to-do list. An example, flip fluids can emit dust now. Dust particles will be emitted underwater on impact with an obstacle and can be used to visualize underwater streams to give an example. To use dust, just enable the dust checkbox in the white water simulation panel. Another great improvement is to be able to set a speed for spray particles. So if these spray particles are not flying far enough, you can increase the speed for spray emission and your spray will get an extra boost. To use spray speed, take a look to the emitter settings. Overall, a lot of improvements has been done in the code. The Blender crashing issue was fixed in the Blender 2.8.1 release. It added features to let us use the lock interface option to prevent crashing. And our simulator code is more organized and easier to develop. And this is a good time for the next point in this video. Let's talk about something you all are waiting for. Force fields. Force fields are a big challenge for us and we are currently investing in it most of the time. While on the one hand the simulation should run as stable as possible, we would also like to give you a maximum visual experience. For example, it should be possible to see the force fields themselves. A lot of preparation and code changes have had to be made in the past few months. And it will probably be ready soon. So keep an eye on our blog, because this is also new. Our Flip Fluids add-on homepage. You will find it at flipfluids.com. There are all information about the add-on as well as a development blog to update you with news regularly. To make this homepage as great as possible for our customers, we are working on a big learning center. 
As example, there is the improved documentation. There is over double the amount of documentation since last year. Many new topics were added to cover common questions from our users. And the new complete guide series that is in production yet is there as well as links to Blender Physics creative series. Oh, and when talking about being creative, this year we called for content for our first customer reel. The customer reel 2020 will be a video containing only the best simulations from FlipFluid users that has been sent to us. If you would like to participate, the customer reel 2020 is the site to visit now. The Polar Grid Render Farm is supporting participants with fantastic features like baking and rendering, both for free for a limited time, so don't miss to visit them. A tutorial about how this will work will be linked in the description below. And finally, we are pleased to announce that we now have our own YouTube channel, where we publish the complete guide series and everything related to development and reels. Blender Physics is still available to provide you with creative learning material. Okay, that was it for now. Thank you all for an amazing year. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please subscribe our new FlipFruits channel on YouTube to do not miss any news in the future. And don't forget to send us your best FlipFruits simulation for the Customer Reel 2020. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.